This is the fifth lesson for unit number six, uh, where we're looking at differential equations. And today we're going to look at something called slope fields. And it turns out it's going to be our backup plan when kind of everything else just doesn't work and we're trying to solve a differential equation. Um, so a little bit of theory on this page and then we'll try it out over three more pages. Um, first of all, just kind of the story, okay, the definition of what a slope field actually is. It's actually something called a vector field. And you've never seen one of those before, so you know, wait till you see it to see how the whole deal works. But it is a vector field representing uh, the direction of the solution to a differential equation. And here's the part that's a little bit weird, and, and it's not going to make a lot of sense until we try this out, but I'm going to say in here, at all points. Okay, so, so far, my guess is that's pretty meaningless to you, and that's okay, right? We'll get this whole, I'll dial in here in a second. Um, here is our four-part plan for solving differential equations. Um, as you go down the list, things become kind of more, more hopeless. And we want to hopefully be near the top of the list when we're doing these differential equations. Um, the first possibility is that you've got a differential equation where on the right-hand side you have just some sort of function of x or a function of the independent variable. This would be the best news ever. Okay, so I'm just going to put in here, uh, this would be great because it's just a function of x. If that's the case, um, maybe, maybe you're differential equation looks like this. Maybe it says dy dx is equal to, now again over here, just a function of x, maybe 5x squared. Or if it's a physics story, maybe it says ds dt is equal to, and then just simply a function of t over here. Maybe it says 8t squared plus t, or you know something like that. Nothing but t's. If that's the case, then all we have to do is integrate once. That's our plan. When we do go and integrate once, we're going to end up picking up some sort of constant of integration along the way. So you'd say, oh, okay, yep, I can get this to work. My y, when I'm done, it's just going to be this integral of that f of x, you know, whatever was on that right here, right? Whatever was on that right-hand side, you'd be integrating that, you know, dx. And yeah, you'd, you'd pick up a constant there, right, that you could go and find with some initial value. So that's, um, that's kind of the best deal. If it's a second order differential equation, but it's just a function of x, um, so maybe maybe it looks like this. So again, notice I have just f of x here. There's no y's. Maybe your story says that uh, y double prime is equal to 5x squared. Okay, or maybe maybe it's a physics story, and maybe it says you know d squared s second derivative of position. So this must be acceleration. Maybe they say that's equal to 8t squared. Well, if that's what you've got, then you can play the same game of just plain old integrating, but you're going to have to integrate twice. And each time you do it, you're going to end up picking up a constant. So when you're finally done and you're like, hey, you know, what actually is y? Well, you'll have to integrate that f of x dx and then add on a c. And then you're going to have to integrate it again, right, a second time, dx, and then you'll pick up another c. So you'd have a couple of integrals on the go. Not, it's not a big deal, right? We've done that a couple of pages ago. Things were fine. Then last day, we saw these ones where your derivative, your y prime, is actually equal to some sort of combination of x's and y's, but they're separable. You can actually tear them apart. So if this is the case, then you want to separate the x's and y's. That's why we call this thing a separable differential equation. And then you integrate each side. Okay, so you do those integrals separately. And then after you've integrated each of the sides, the left side and the right side, 
then after that you'd go and solve for y get that y all by itself and that works out pretty good you know maybe maybe you've got some story that looks like this maybe it says your derivative is equal to now again here i'll have x's and y's but they're separable i might have you know like a y squared multiplied by a sine x so i'd be able to tear those apart and put that y squared over on the left side that can't be done right that's that's doable but what if you can't separate it what if you've got some function that's all messed up over here right so this is non-separable okay if it's a non-separable differential equation maybe maybe it could look like this maybe it says dy dx is equal to now it's just anything that you can't tear apart maybe like tan of xy plus i don't know the root of xy right things like that there's no way that you could tear that apart and put the x's on one side and the y's on another if that's what happens when you stare at the question then let's go to our backup plan so our our final backup plan is just going to be to use slope fields there's something that you could use if you're kind of over your head and you're just looking for something to, to come up with the answer. And what's interesting, it doesn't even fully come up with the answer. It just comes up with a picture of possible answers. Now, the Calculus AP program wants to make sure that when you finish the course, you're comfortable coming up with slope fields for, um, for various stories. Um, and they'll usually have you actually use a slope field even on a question where it might have even been separable right they just want you to demonstrate that you're ready to do it should you be working with a story that's actually super hard um, i'm going to start off with one that's actually incredibly easy right i'm going to start off with this differential equation here where the derivative is just a function of x so in terms of level of difficulty if i was to look and see you know where where is this on the scale of things this is a level one where y prime is just some function of x, right? It's just equal to x, in fact. Um, I really don't need a lot of help to solve this one. I can solve it in about the space that I've got right here. I could say, hey, well, the y would just be the antiderivative of x dx. So the answer is y is equal to 1 half x squared, just flattened out parabolas, plus some sort of constant. We could even use this information here about how when x is negative 2, the y is 1.5, to find that constant. And in this case, when you actually go and do that, you know, based on this info right here, I can even tell you that the particular solution to this story, I, I don't need slope fields here, right? I can actually go and get it with a little bit of work, and I would see that the answer is 1 half x squared. It would actually be minus 1 half. And then that point, negative 2, 1.5, would actually be on this graph. So, like, you know, there's the answer. I didn't need any slope fields. But what I want to do is pretend that this question is so hard that I didn't know how to do it. And so I'm actually going to go and draw a slope field on this graph paper that's right here. So I've obviously I've got my x-axis going this way, my y-axis going that way. And it looks like I'm going to go from negative 3 to 3 for x's and then negative 2 to 2. So here's what slope fields actually do for you. They let you see the whole, what we call family of solutions. So slope fields, yeah, they let you see the whole family of solutions. So a solution family would be all the different possible solutions where you have different values for that C. So these are all possible C's. Okay, so trying this slope field game out with this super easy story. Here's how it works. Um, I'm going to mess my picture up a little bit. You might want to just sort of watch, and then I'm going to erase a lot. So uh, maybe don't follow me entirely. Um, I start taking each one of these points that I want to draw the little slope field vector at, and I would look at its coordinates. Like, for instance, this one right here. So, again, don't totally follow me because I'm going to erase a lot of this. But the coordinates are, the, are 1, 1 for that point. 1 for x and 1 for y. And I take that point, 1 for x, 1 for y, and I actually go and I put it 
into this right hand side. Now this right hand side is remarkably nice. It doesn't even have Y's in it, right? It's just got X's. You got to remember that this plan is good for ones that are as awful as that, where there's X's and Y's that are not separable. This one is remarkably simple, just an X. And I'd say, okay, well, what happens if I put one for X and one for Y in? Well, I'll put your one in for X. And what I find is Y prime would equal one. And so that tells me if there was an answer going through this point, it would have to go through this point with a slope of one. So I'm going to go up to this point and I'm going to draw a very short little line, very short, that's got a slope of one. So it's like one over one up, little 45 degree line, just like that. I'm going to do this four more times here where the X's are one. Like what if I, what if I tried this point out? This point is also one for X, but two for Y. Remember this right hand side, it doesn't care what Y is. So it would say, oh, you found another place where X was equal to one. Great. Yeah, that would be a 45 degree line as well. So you would go here and you would draw a line that's at a 45 degree angle. Even this point right here, it's one for X, nothing for Y. Well, again, I don't even really care about what Y is for this story. It's got one for X, so Y prime would be one. If the answer goes through here, it'll go here with a slope of one. Same thing here and here. Okay, well, let's try out these one, two, three, four, five points. They all have their X value being zero. So I'm going to try putting in zero for X into the differential equation. Some differential equations will have Y's over here as well, and they'll care what the Y's are, but these ones don't, right? Not this story. So I would get zero for my derivative, zero for my slope. If there's an answer that goes through these points, it's going to go through flat. Okay, let's go over to right here, all these points where the X is equal to two. If I was to put each one of those points in one at a time into this differential equation into here, well, all it cares about are the X's. It would go, oh, the X's are two? Oh, okay, if an answer goes through here, it's gonna be pretty steep, right? With a slope of two, like this. And over here, slope of three. Now, nobody's gonna take a protractor and measure to make sure you've got exactly the right angle. That's not what it's all about. These five points where the X's are negative one, well, if I put those points into my differential equation, I'd see that Y prime is negative one. So any answer going through here goes through at that angle. Then I'm gonna try these five points out. They all have an X value of negative two. So what if I substitute them into the differential equation, I get a slope of negative two, a little steeper. And then here, negative three. And you're done, you've just drawn a slope field. You might look at it and go, well, well, what good is it? Well, these are like little weather vanes and they show me what the family of solutions look like. Now, remember, we, we were able to do the antiderivative for this. It wasn't actually all that hard. And we saw that it's really just like one half X squared flattened out parabolas. This slope field says, yeah, I like that flattened out parabolas. And if you look, it's kind of like this, this little picture here is saying, yeah, if you just follow the little blue weather vanes, it's kind of like, yeah, it goes, goes kind of like this and just use them as a little guide for which way the answer goes. But it could be that answer or maybe, maybe this one or maybe this one. All of these follow those little weather vanes. So those little blue arrows say, yeah, the answer, the answer family has to go like this. Now what we're going to do is kind of pick the best one. Like which one do we want? Well, hopefully one that has this point on it that they talked about, right? They said, oh, if you put negative two in, it should be one and a half. Okay, so negative two, one and a half. We need to go through that point right there. So you might be a little disappointed by this in the end because we're, we're not going to be trying to be perfect here. We're just going to sketch, right? So if I, if I look at this and go, oh, okay, well, where would, where would the graph possibly go? I don't know, maybe down kind of like this. I don't know roughly speaking. And if they're saying, oh, well, what do you think a possible value for Y of one is? I don't know, you know, like somewhere in and around here, right? Just kind of following the map. And so it's just a map. That's all it is. Okay. Just a little guide for which way the answers might go. Now on the next page, I've used a really bad graphing calculator program to draw some slope fields. And I apologize. They're just not very good looking. 
Um, but we're going to see if we can figure out, kind of do a little matching game here and figure out, figure out which slope field is for which differential equation at the top. Um, it's very, very difficult to actually see what the x value markings are here. So it says here the viewing window right here, it says goes from negative 3 to 3 for x and negative 2 to 2 for y. Um, and the x-axis and the y-axis are just not in good shape on these graphs. So I'm just going to, on this one, kind of thicken them up, just kind of show you where we're going here, right? So there's my y-axis, here's my x-axis, and yeah, so this this goes from negative 3 to 3, so like right here is negative 3, that's probably negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and down as low as minus 2, and up as far as 2. And each one of those graphs looks like that. Okay, well, you know what? We should probably spend a second and actually just draw all those in. Um, it's actually going to be important to kind of be able to locate where things are. So, yeah, that'll take us a few seconds here, but worth the time. Every one of these graphs goes with that window. And I'm kind of hoping my calculator is going to, or my computer is going to bring those pictures back. Ah, there they are. Likes to do that to me. Okay, so there are some differential equations up there at the top of the page. In fact, there are seven of them. And a neat little AP Calculus skill is to see whether or not you can identify which slope field is for which differential equation. Something that they might actually give you on the AP exam. Okay, getting close to being ready to go. I'm going to show you how you can find some little identifiers on these slope fields. And I've got one more right here. Okay, looking at the differential equations up at the top of the page, uh, a lot of them are fractions, right? Like these ones here, especially. So let's just think about what that means if you've got your differential equation equal to a fraction. If you've got your y prime is equal to some sort of top, some numerator divided by some sort of bottom down there, some denominator. Well, we've seen what happens with fractions and how you can make them zero or how you can make the fractions go all silly. If the top is zero, okay, if that numerator goes to zero, then that would tell you that y prime would be zero, right? A zero in the top makes the fraction equal to zero and your slope field would have to be perfectly flat. So the little hack mark would look like this, it would go beautifully horizontally okay, on your slope field. In contrast to that, if you've got some algebra where the bottom is going to go to zero at some spot on your graph paper, then your y prime, it's going to be does not exist. It's basically going to be does not exist because it's infinity. It's going to be super steep. And so that would be part of your graph paper where the answer goes straight up and down. And so the slope field will do that too. It'll go straight up and down. Okay, well, let's see if we can figure out which one of these is which. Um, it doesn't really matter where we start. Um, let's actually start uh, way over on the left on the bottom row and just see what that looks like. So here's what I'm noticing about this slope field. It's drawn by a you know really bad program on a TI-83. And what I'm seeing is it, it might look like it's purely vertical here, right? I, I totally wouldn't understand if you were to say, oh yeah, it's gone vertical there. But actually the TI-83 program can't draw them more than like about this deep. It just draws them straight up and down after that. So uh, don't think that that's straight up and down. It's not. 
But what is supposed to be happening, you know, and on the AP exam, they'll do a better job of drawing these. Uh, right here, where x is equal to negative 2, this graph looks like it's going through a little flat spot. All in here, all in that area. So in that spot, looks like y prime is equal to 0. And that location on the graph, everywhere along there, What's special about that point, these are places where x is equal to negative 2. So if there's a differential equation that when you have x's that are negative 2 gives you a 0, that's probably the one. And so this one is actually the y prime is equal to x plus 2. Because if you have points on the graph where x is equal to negative 2, that'll just give you 0. That'll create a little flat spot on your slope field. So that's that one. Okay. Now, right beside it is another interesting one. I think we can get somewhere with this. This one is totally flat all along here. Okay. And that's, oh, I didn't quite get my graphing little line there in the right spot. This whole spot on your graph paper is where the y's are equal to 1. And so you ask yourself, well, how would, how would that differential equation look? where I'd actually get a zero answer, right? In that section, it looks like things are flat, so y primes are equal to zero whenever the y's are equal to one up there. And a good differential equation for that would be y prime is equal to y minus one. Whenever I put in, like if I put any point in, for example, like this point way out here, this point is two, one. And if I put the point 2 for x, 1 for y into this differential equation, the only thing it cares about is the y. And if the y was 1, it would say, oh, yeah, 0 for your y prime. Right? It's going to create that flat spot. So that's, that's definitely the match for those. Now let's kind of look and see which ones we've done here now. We've actually we found this one, got it done, and we've got this one done. Okay. Well, let's, let's look at the one right beside it. Here, here's what I'm thinking. If x was equal to 0, then that would create a 0 answer for your y prime. It would make it flat. And this one here, if y's were equal to negative 1, that would also create a flat spot, right? That would be 0 for your y prime. So if we can find a slope field that is flat, horizontal looking, when x's are 0 and when y's are equal to negative 1, then we've probably found the right slope field. And that one is actually, I think it's way over here. Okay, so looking at this story, we've got flat, 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 flat. It's all flat in here. Those are where the x's are equal to 0. And it's also got another flat spot all along here. And that's the location on the graph paper where y is equal to negative 1. So yeah, this one, this one is the x multiplied by y plus 1. Okay, let's try another one out. We've got a couple of them done. Okay, this one's finished. Ooh, now we're getting into some fractions. This one has just a 1 in the top. There's no way we can make that 0. So I'm looking for a slope field that is never flat, right? Because I'm never going to have, never going to have this happen. So the slope field should never be flat, but we should find a place where we're going to get does not exist for our y prime. It's going to go to infinity for the slope when the x's are equal to 2. And I'm just going to go and see if I can find that here. A place where when x is equal to 2, the graph is going just like straight up and down. And although it doesn't quite look perfect, it was supposed to be happening right here. And this graphing program just didn't quite draw anything at 2 for the little tick marks. But I can kind of look in the background and see it. That yeah, all along in here, this graph has gone, this slope field has gone straight up and down. So I think I found that one. Okay, this one is y prime is equal to 1 all on top of x minus 2. Okay, this one beside it. It can never be flat. There's no option to do that. But we might make the slope field go infinite slope, straight up and down, when y's are equal to 
one. Okay, and that's when it's going to go straight up and down. Now, don't confuse that one with the first one we did, where when y was equal to one, the y prime was equal to zero, the graph was flat. Here, when y is equal to one, the graph is going to go straight up and down, totally vertical. And I think that one is down here. So when y's are equal to one, yep, we're straight up and down all along that chunk of the graph paper. So I'm liking that. I think this one is the one over y minus one. Okay, so that one's done. Okay, I got a couple to go got this one where I've got an x plus 2 in the top. You know, you could make this this top, you could make it equal to 0 if x was negative 2. So when you have negative 2 for x, the y prime would be 0. The graph should be totally flat, okay? Totally flat when the x's are equal to negative 2. And then we could make the graph go straight up and down vertical with a does not exist slope when the y's are equal to uh, a negative one. All right, I, I see that. That picture is actually, it's right here. Here's what I'm noticing. So when x's are equal to negative two, yeah, that's right here. The slope field's flat. But it's also purely vertical when the y's are equal to negative one, right here. And it doesn't really know exactly what to do right in the center of that at negative two, negative one, like right, right here. So don't worry about that spot. But I think we found that one. Okay, so that one is right here. Okay, only one to go. Process of elimination. This one here, this negative of X on top of Y. Well, looking at the top, if the X's are equal to zero, this thing should be totally flat. Yep, looks like that's true right there. And if the y's are equal to zero, that's when we're gonna have straight up and down vertical. Yep, looks like it. And you can even check out some other points here too. Like for example, let's just pick some point like way out here. Okay, so again, I just wanna show you how this whole slope field game works, right? This is the point two for x, two for y. And if I put in two for x and two for y, I get negative two over two, I get negative one. And sure enough, right here, the slope is negative one. Right, it's saying, yeah, any answer there is gonna be going kind of downhill at a 45 degree angle. Okay, well, enough of that. that that's actually been really hard to look at because those graphing calculator pictures are pretty horrible. Um, let's try out two AP exam questions, and I think you'll see that it may even be a little bit easier than that. So with the AP exam questions, they often start fairly easy and then they get harder and then they get harder again. So part A, we'll see how this one goes and then we'll do part B, it'll be a little tougher and then part C will be the toughest. Um, so it says, consider this differential equation. Hey, that looks separable to me, right? It's first order, but it is separable. We could move the Y if we want to. And the first thing they said is on the axis provided, can you just sketch the slope field for the given differential equation at the 12 points they've got there? Okay. Um, I basically do it like this. I look at each one of these points, you know, like this one here. This is 2, 2. This one is, sorry, not 2, 2. Let me try that again. This one right here is 1, 2. This one is 1, 1. This one down here is 1, negative 1. And here we've got 1, negative 2. And I'm going to take those pairs of numbers and I'm going to put them into this differential equation. So for instance, this first point right here, this one for X, two for Y, I'm going to go and put one in for X, two in for Y, and just see what this does. I would have a negative two on top of a two. Well, that's negative one. So at this point, my slope field has a negative one slope to it, just down at a 45 degree angle. Let's try this one, one point. Okay, so we'll change this. Say, hey, that's now going to be a 1. That would be negative 2 on top of a 1. So that's negative 2. So right here, oh, the graph just got a little bit steeper. It's kind of got a negative 2 slope to it. What about down here at 1, negative 1? Okay, 1 for x, negative 1 for y. So 1 for x, 
negative one front. Ooh, that negative is going to cancel. We're actually going to get a slope of two. And then one negative two, one for x. Negative two. Oh, the negatives cancel and the twos cancel. We're going to get a positive one for the slope, 45 degree angle. And this is the game we're going to play. We're just going to do it for eight more points. Uh, this point up here is 0, 2, 0 for x, 2 for y. So I'm just going to this differential equation. I'm putting in 0 for x, 2 for y. So that'll be 0 on top of 2. So that's flat right there. Even this point, 1 for x, sorry, 0 for x, 1 for y. So 0 for x, 1 for y. Well, that's still 0. So the graph is still flat. And in fact, it's going to be also flat here and flat there. Then I try this point. Okay, so this point here is negative 1, 2, negative 1 for x. And 2 for y. Okay, so that would be double negative 2 on top of 2. That's a slope of positive 1. So any answers going through here have to look like that. When you try this point, try it out. You should get a positive 2. Here you're going to get a negative 2, and then here you get a negative 1. And so I can kind of see, generally, what the answers are going to look like. You know, the possible family of solutions? Maybe they, maybe they go kind of like this, or maybe like that. Right? These are some possibilities. Right? We're going to have to do the rest of the question to find out. Okay, then they go on to say, let f of x actually be the particular solution to the differential equation with this nice initial condition. So we've got 1 for x and negative 1 for y. There's, there's a point out there, right? It's going to be 1 for x, negative 1 for y. It's actually on this graph. 1 for x, negative 1, it would be right there on this graph. It says write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of f at 1, negative 1, and then use it to approximate the answer at 1.1 for x. So just kind of looking at the picture, I'm thinking that this graph is probably going to go, I don't know, like kind of like this or something, right? Roughly. And they're asking me, oh, could you go and get a tangent line to the particular solution? Could you go and do this sort of thing, right? Yeah, okay. I think we can do that. If we want to find a tangent line, we need to have a point and a slope. Well, I think we're good to go. I think we're totally good to go. The point, we've got it. They gave it to us. The point is 1 for x, negative 1 for y. The slope. What's the slope of the solution going to be there? Well, this differential equation right up here, it tells me, right? It's just going to be this y prime in this story. We're going to put 1 in for x and negative 1 in for y. So 1 goes in for x, negative 1 goes in for y. That would be a negative 2 on top of a negative 1. That's going to be 2. So I can just substitute in that xy point into the differential equation and see that at that point on this red sketch I've got for the graph, oh, the slope's got to be 2. So I can actually go and find this, uh, this tangent line pretty quickly. I'm going to play our usual game. y minus a negative 1 sitting on top of x. Minus 1 has to be 2. So I, again, all I did to find the actual slope right here, I just put in the point into that differential equation. They told me the point was going to be 1 for x, negative 1 for y. Okay, so this is the uh, tangent line, right? That green line that's there. And it looks like it's y plus 1 is equal to 2 times x minus 1. And since we're going to use this as a little estimator, maybe I'll go and move the 1 and say y is equal to, as I move the 1, what are we going to have here? Like a negative 1 plus 2 times x minus 1, yeah, something like that. Okay, so great. We've got the tangent line equation. That's part of this story. So far, so good. And then they're saying, oh, well, can you use it as an estimator for the value of the function at 1.1? So they're actually, they're technically asking me to do an estimate of this red curved graph here, right? 
the actual solution. And they're like, well, what about at 1.1 right here? Well, let's just go and see how this, this line is doing right here at 1.1. It's probably pretty close. So this is our whole linearization thing we were doing before. So we can say, okay, let's do an estimate here. Using this tangent line, we'll just say y off that tangent line at 1.1. Okay, negative 1 plus 2 times 1.1 minus 1. I probably won't even need a calculator here. So negative 1 plus 2 times 0 0.1. Uh, negative 1 plus 0 0.2. Looks like we've got negative 0 0.8. Done. That's my best guess on what that graph that I've drawn in red is actually doing when x is equal to 1.1. All right, well, these AP exam questions are usually about 15 minutes long. So we've got some time left here for the hardest part. It says find the, the particular solution with the initial condition that they gave you. So it's time now to, to throw all of our skills at this and see if we can get this thing to work. The differential equation was dy dx is equal to negative 2x all on top of a y. Okay, I'm a little bit bothered by the fact that the answer is showing up in the differential equation, so I have to separate it. It's my only hope to get this to work. If I separate the variables like last lesson, I could say y dy is equal to negative 2x dx. So far, so good. Now I'm going to integrate both sides. Let's see how that looks. And when I integrate over here, I'm going to have a 1 half y squared is equal to, here it's going to be a negative x squared plus some sort of constant. And now what I want to do is solve for that constant. Okay, actually I have to solve for y first and then I'm going to solve for the constant. Truth be told, you could do either one of those deals first, solving for c or solving um, for y. Uh, I'm going to go for y first, just get it by itself. So I'm going to double both sides. As soon as I double both sides, this thing is going to look like this. y squared is equal to negative 2x squared. Now here comes my crazy little move. I'm doubling some constant that I don't even know what it is yet. So without loss of generality, it's okay to just say, yeah, there you go. It's a different C, but it'll be fine. So that that's kind of a standard thing in math that people don't really sweat that. Okay, I have to take a square root. So I'm just going to go up here. So Y, as I get this thing almost done, uh, square roots, got to watch out for them. We talked about them last day. Could be plus, could be minus. We're going to have to very carefully decide which. And then inside the root, we've got this negative 2 x squared plus c. So we have to pick and see which one we want here. But we can tell as soon as we put in this information that says when x is equal to 1, the y has to work out to be negative 1. So we're going to get negative 1 when we substitute in a value of 1 for x. Okay, I can see which one it is. It's definitely going to be the minus option. That's the only way we can get this to work. All right, so it won't be the plus option. So I'm definitely going to go with with this option right there. I like the minus. Okay, so continuing to solve this, right, as I work on this here, I can take the negatives away. One would be, once I divide by the negative, one would be this. This would be a negative two plus c. Okay, so I'd square both sides. One is equal to negative two plus c. Looks like this c is equal to three. I'm done. Here's the answer. This actually didn't even take too long. Y, which is actually a function of X. It's made up of X's. It's equal to, I'm going to kind of go and look back here. It's the negative option. It's the only way we could get it to work. Of a square root of negative 2 X squared plus a 3. That's the perfect story here for how this graph is going to unfold. Now I want to show you 
one technical little detail with how this is actually going to look when we uh, when we try this out on our graphing calculator. So if I just put this in and say, yeah, what, what is that looking like? I'm going to try a zoom four. Okay, not bad. Um, it's pretty close. Maybe we'll zoom in a little bit. Yeah, it's okay. It's not quite going all the way up to there, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. Um, looking back at my first little sketch, I was using those little blue weather vanes as a guide for just, just sketching this answer. And I, I kind of got pretty close, right? It kind of looks like this. Um, important, subtle little detail. Get rid of that tangent line. Get rid of this. Okay. You might be able to look at this story, right? There's the point we were using. You might be able to look at the story and look at the weather vanes and go, oh, you know what? I think the answer is going to go kind of like this. And you might be tempted to draw something very like full circle-ish, but it turns out you're not allowed to. If you actually look at what would happen to the slope field little vector lines when you're along the x-axis, this particular story, when y is equal to zero, would actually be really bad. You'd have straight up and down slope field lines here. And that tells me that this answer is going to go purely vertical right as it gets to the, the x-axis there. This calculator just didn't do a great job drawing that. I'm not allowed to pass through that. So if I'm sketching what I think the answer is going to look like, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I think it's going to look kind of like this. Right? It's going to go like that. You have to stop right here as soon as the answer goes vertical. You're not allowed to follow it through a straight up and down vector field little hack mark. Um, it's just a, a little rule of math that says, nope, the derivative is broken there. The derivative is your tour guide, and they're lost. So you can't keep going. You'd have to stop right at that x-axis. Okay, well, this one's done. There's only one more for today. So another AP exam question. This one was from 2004. Um, again, if um, you're trying to do this test, you'd want to hopefully get this done in 15 minutes. They start off not too bad, and then they get harder and harder. Um, it is a separable differential equation, just like the last one. And they start off by saying, well, could you do a slope field? Like, you know, what if it wasn't separable? What if you were way over your head? So sure, we can do that. So on the axis provided, sketch a slope field at the 12 points that are indicated. Uh, so the game, again, works like this. You know, this point is 1 for x, 3 for y. So if you want to know which way to draw the hack mark here, you know, should it be like this, like that? Like, you know, which way should it go? You go over to the differential equation, and you would put 1 in for x, and you would put 3 in for y, and you'd say, hey, what is the slope worth? And so x squared, that would be 1 squared. And then 3 minus 1 is 2. So 1 squared times a 2. Hey, that's got a slope of 2 there. So I'm going to go right here at this point and just put in a slope of about 2, 1 over 2 up. Nobody's going to grab a protractor and double check you, right? That looks roughly like 2. Then maybe I try this point. 1 for x, 2 for y. So 1 goes in here, 2 goes in there. 1 squared times a 1. Oh, that's just a slope of 1 here. It's like a 45 degree line. Then I'm going to try this one out. This one is 1 for x, 1 for y. So I go back up to my differential equation. I put those in because I want to see what's the slope. What's the little hack mark look like? That would be 1 times 0. Ooh, flat right there. Right. Kind of went a little thick on that one. There we go. And this last point, this is 1, 0. So I try that point out, 1 for x, 0 for y, that'd be 1 times a negative 1. Oh, yeah, you got a negative 1 slope there, like that. Okay, now let's try these next points here. This one is 0, 3, 0 for x, 3 for y. Oh, well, 0 for x, that wipes that out. Flatness, right, the derivative will be 0, so put a little flat hack mark. Same thing with this one. 0 for x, 2 for y. Yeah, try it. It'll be flat, right? The dy dx will be 0. 0 for x, 1 for y. Try them out. Put them in here. It'll be flat. And this one's flat too. Okay, so those ones went pretty quick. 
Now back here, when the x's are negative 1, so negative 1 squared, that's just a 1, and then trying out the different y's. When y is 3, 3 minus 1 would be 2. When y is 2, 2 minus 1 would be 1. When y is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. And when y is 0, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Okay, great. Got my slope field. And it kind of roughly shows, you know, which way answers might go if I was to look at the answer here. So slope field's finished. Okay. It took me a, a second or two. And usually they would only have slopes that are 0, infinity, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and that's about it. Part B. Uh, it says, well, the slope field that you drew in part A was only done at 12 points. It's actually doable at every point in the xy plane, right? Like you, you could, you could go and pick this point right here and say, well, what about at 0 0.5 and 2.5? You could put those numbers in here and see how steep low hack mark is. So we could have played this game an infinite number of places and we just did 12. So they said, yeah, you only did 12, but it is it is happy all over the xy plane. It says, describe all the points in the xy plane for which the slopes are positive. When do you get a positive answer? Well, it doesn't look like we were getting positive answers here. So why was that? Well, that's when this y minus 1 is negative. You know, if you think about it, you've got these two things multiplied together, right? You've got x squared multiplied by y minus 1. This x squared, this is always positive. Well, maybe zero, but it's never negative. So if you want your answer for x squared times y minus 1 to be positive, then you need this to be positive. So when is that positive? Well, the y's would have to be bigger than 1. So at first glance, I'm tempted just to say, well, anywhere above that line, y is equal to 1. You know, if I go to my graph paper here and say, hey, right here, this is the y is equal to 1 line. When you're up above there, then that binomial y minus 1 will be positive. But be careful, be careful. We want to avoid this spot in here where things are flat. So I might I might add a little addition in there and say, well, above the line y is equal to 1, but maybe like stay away from, so not on the y-axis though. It would still be 0 there. So stay away from the y-axis and go above 1 and you're fine. Okay, here comes the final part of the day, final part of this AP exam question too. It says, can you actually go and find the particular solution that means we're going to use this boundary value we're going to use this point right so there's a point on the graph zero for x three for y can you go and actually find the solution uh, maybe it's probably going to take me a little bit of work but i'm willing to give it a try now i'm going to split my page here a little bit because i'm not going to quite have enough room to get it done all at once okay so the differential equation uh, the one they gave us was dy dx is equal to x squared times y minus 1. It is separable, so I'm definitely going to do that. I'm going to divide both sides by y minus 1. And I'm going to have 1 over y minus 1 dy is equal to x squared dx. Okay, well, this, this has like a little blob to it. You know, you could do this with substitution, or you might find that by now, for substitution questions that aren't too bad, maybe you can just kind of look at it and go, yeah, I think I've got a feeling for it. Uh, I'm going to do a little doodling over here for a second, but then I'm going to erase it. I do know that if I ever have to integrate 1 over x dx, I know that that's just like ln x, but I'll put some absolute value bars on it. And this certainly has that feeling, right? It's one over a blob. So at first glance, I might be thinking, well, let's just try this and see how it looks. You know, like we can always erase it. But maybe this is going to be ln of that blob. 
if I took a derivative of that, this would behave like a blob and you would say, oh, one over it. And then you would multiply by the derivative of that blob, but that's just a one. So this is working great. This is working really, really well. We do need to put absolute value bars on it though, whenever we integrate one over X and say, say that it's ln X, so we should do it here too. Now on the other side, things are a bit easier. This is gonna be an X cubed with a little one third bodyguard and then plus a C. Okay, at this point, this is neat. We can actually decide if we want these absolute value bars or not. We can actually see based on this point right here. We've got one point in our story where y is equal to three. And so let's just see if these absolute value bars are doing anything. If I put this in here like three minus one, oh, that's, that's just like absolute value of two. We don't need the absolute value bars. We can remove them. They'll either be needed all day long in your story or they'll never be needed. And absolute value of three minus one, yeah, you just don't have to put the absolute value bars on that. So I'm actually gonna remove these absolute value bars on my next line and say, you know what? How about we just call this the lawn of y minus one is equal to one third x cubed plus a c. Okay, so now what? Well, let's see if we can go and figure out what y would be, right? Our usual, uh, usual task here, usual step at this point would be to solve for y. Right, that's what's got to happen next. Oh, I'm out of space there. So if I want to solve for y, and right now it's in a lawn, then I'm going to exponentiate both sides. I'm going to do e to the on both sides. And when I do that, I'll end up with just a y minus 1 on the left. But then I have e to the 1 third x cubed plus a c sitting over there. And I want to try to get to just y. I can do it. Y would be e to the one third x cubed plus c, then add one. We're close. We just need to figure out what that value for c needs to be. Now I'm gonna do a little maneuver here. The first time you see it, you'll be going, what? And it's just a standard move, especially in physics. Um, but you know, obviously this is a calculus course, but we do this in physics all the time where instead of finding the C up here, it actually feels a little bit better to rewrite this and say, you know what, this is kind of like a math 10 question, but backwards, this is like E to the C multiplied by E to the one third X cubed and then add one. If you had to multiply those two powers together with the same base, you would have just added the exponents. This e to the c right here, this is just some other constant. So we usually say, hey, you know, a nicer way to write that is actually this, this constant e to the c. We'll just call it this. Now, technically, you know, officially, I guess this is like constant number one and this is constant number two but we'll do this so many times, people are just gonna be like, yeah, whatever. Without loss of generality, we're fine, right? Not gonna hurt anything. And so you're trying to find that constant, which is actually really, really, really nice, especially when they go and they put zero in for X like they are right here. Because when you put zero in for X, x zero cubed is zero, a third of that's still zero, and e to the zero is one. So I really like this, it's a nice way to go. And I can say, hey, I've gotta get three, this is a c, when you have this e to the zero plus one. So that's just one. This thing needs to be two. Looks like c needs to be two. Okay, final answer. This particular solution, y, which is a function of x, it's equal to two e to the one third 
x cubed, then add 1. Those part C's are supposed to be tough. All right, and we did a couple little transformations in there. You'll, you'll get accustomed to this, right? So this little maneuver right there, it does seem odd, uh, but we'll do that a lot, especially on our next lesson with exponential growth and exponential decay. It's just a much, much nicer way to express that unknown constant C that we're looking for. And without loss of generality, it works just fine. And that is the end of, uh, of that lesson. Then the next day we're going to apply some of this stuff with exponential growth and exponential decay.